Yo, 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 it's Y.O.D., your roads rule, messing with hot new hip hop. We on the come up, well, what? Make it happen. Now, when we start messing around from Brooklyn, the southern part, where nobody really wants to go, and, uh, yeah. It was pretty regular growing up over there. I was up to a lot of shiesty bullshit, just being a scumbag, you know, Messing up in school, dropping out in ninth grade, getting my GED. But keeping up rap through the years and it finally paid off. I mean, when I was younger, I used to listen to rock and rap. You know, I used to think you could only listen to one thing. So I'd have like my phases where I was only listening to rock music. I was only listening to rap. I actually learned how to play the guitar, self-taught later on in life. But uh, that EP was just me bugging out kind of having fun with the rock references. There's not like too much guitar on that, but you know, me, RTNC, the other producers, we got busy, had fun with it. When I was growing up, my favorite rappers were Big L, Biggie, Tupac, Cassidy, Lloyd Banks, everybody. Just a lot of unsung dudes too. I don't want to give them no airtime. They struggling right now. Honestly, I didn't think it could be a career because I was just doing it for fun for a bunch of years. And then uh, seeing certain people make it, and then knowing a few people personally, it motivated me to go a little harder, get my music out there, try to network and build with certain people. And. Uh, just seeing, just seeing other people come up, people my age, or even younger than me. I'm like, you know, my time about to expire, I gotta get it. I mean, I really started making songs in 2010, so I was around me for a bunch of years, just battling, having ciphers. And that was like when, when I didn't think I could make money off it. You know what I mean? I got my first piece of money in 2013 off rap. And it was because somebody used the song in a YouTube video. And I was just hype off that. Like I took took that money to the staircase and started gambling. You know what I mean? Playing CeeLo. Kept winning. And during that time, I made that first EP. And I was paying for those sessions with that money. With the first EP, I was just trying to showcase my talent. Show people what I could do. That's why the verses were so damn long. I was just trying to get busy. Had a bunch of rhymes. And I finally linked up with, with the right producer and the right engineer, and we made it happen. So. Now, when I first posted the EP on SoundCloud, it was real struggle rapper status. Like I wasn't running up on Cats on 42nd Street, like, yo, you listen to hip hop, buy my CD. It was more like, how are we gonna get it out there? Like, how are you gonna get it to the blogs or whatever? Get it to people, it was like a real struggle, like two people might have posted it, like, nah, right. Shout out to my man Stan from over there. He showed mad love. My man Sasha from Mass Appeal did a write-up. And that's where the little comparison started. But, yeah. Uh, and then yeah. finally snowballed. I mean, like, it's, it's been satisfying when, when people you look up to, idols show love, like, my man Sean P was one of the first to show love. And uh, just me and Cass, like Lil Fame, Tragedy, and Master Ace helped me with my first show, like the set. Uh, mad people, I know I'm forgetting. And I'll, I'll probably remember when I'm on the train or some shit or in the cab, but definitely P, uh, Prodigy, that, that meant a lot being in the studio with him. Doing that song, Hoodie Weather. Uh, Mad people though, yeah. Not just rappers. Yeah, yeah, the first Webster Hall show was actually the first time I ever performed on stage. You know what I mean? But I was ready, I was just hyped up more than anything. Like, like there's no way I'm gonna come out here and drop a dud, like, so. I came out, you know, it was a big frenzy and a lot of people there for the spectacle, a couple true fans, more than a couple, but it just felt, I feel like I had a bunch of eyes on me. I feel like people were holding up heaters. You know what I mean? I came out, the jersey, the Lucy shirt, 
We still rock, got busy, Sean P came through. The openers rocked it, timeless. And you know what, like, for my first show, it was pretty good. I feel like I, I got better since then, performing live, but I'll never forget that. You know, the New York Times write-up was crazy. I remember uh, always wanting to be in the New York Times. I finally, you know, had that at the show. And then later on, uh, a few months later, we got in the top 10 for 2014. So it meant a lot. But that first show, it meant a lot to show and prove. So I'll never forget that one. You know, a lot of people say that I have a 90s sound or whatever, but for me, especially on that first EP and everything since then, it's just been trying to prove that I can rhyme. Like, that's why the verses are so long. I feel like I just gotta go super hard. But uh, if anything, I say it's more like early 2000s type sound. Like, cause that's what I came up on. Like, Freeway, and, you know, Dipset and D-Block and all that. Like, and then went back to the 90s and studied that. But uh, I feel like my sound is my own. It'll keep evolving. Who knows what I'll, what I'll do in the future. So we got a bunch of stuff already out right now. We got the nicest EP. We got Kennison EP. We got my first project, the self-titled one. We got that available in all formats, vinyl, cassettes. I don't know who got cassette players, but get that if you do. I mean, we got merch, all that. But you know, there's more stuff to come in the future. Can't call it right now, but I might do a country album. 